All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's virtual conference. My name is Matt Larson. I'm the president and CEO of our hometown. And uh, we provide websites and digital solutions for uh, local community newspapers. But I'm not going to be talking about our websites today. Uh, really, the focus of today's presentation is going to be on this technique that we've developed uh, in the marketing department here at our hometown uh, for how to produce high yield content with live video interviews. OK, and I want to walk you through my whole process step by step. Um, now we're gonna get started in just a minute. I just wanna make sure that we've got most of our attendees on. And it looks like a lot of the folks that registered have joined us. We got a great turnout today. So I just wanna say that, you know, the reason that we do these things live is for the audience participation. This is not meant to be a lecture at all. Um, if I wanted it to be like that, I would just pre-record it and just put it out there. But that's kind of a point I want to make in this video, too, is that the live video is its own product. It's its own piece of content, and it's got a lot of really unique advantages. So um, if we could maybe start off, if you all could locate the questions area of the GoToWebinar control panel, open that up and just drop a hello in there. Maybe just say, you know, hey, it's Allison from The Wave in uh, New York or something. Hey, Allison. Uh, and so I, I see a lot of familiar faces on this list, actually, but um, also a lot of new names. So, all right. Hey, Vera. Great. Thank you so much. This is also just to confirm that audio is working. So it looks like you can all hear me fine. Hey, Debbie. All right. Newport this week representing. OK, Carolina Par Panorama newspaper. All right. Welcome, Nate. Thank you so much, everyone. Very cool. Terry, hello. Steven, uh, welcome everyone. Great. Allison from Rockaway. All right, great. So um, yeah, so let's let's kick it off here. I think we're, we've got about 10, uh, I think the majority uh, the, of the attendees are here. So um, thank you all for joining us. And this is all gonna be recorded and we're gonna share the video, uh, you know, a link to the video after. And again, that's kind of what I'm talking about today. What we're doing today is sort of like a meta presentation. This is part of the process I'm going to present to you here. OK, so the other thing I just want to plug really quick is the upcoming uh, NNA virtual conference, the National Newspaper Association. They're going to be having uh, a virtual conference October 1st through the 3rd. And they've asked me to give this presentation at the conference. So that'll be on Friday the 2nd in the afternoon. So check out NNA.org slash convention if you want to learn more about this. They're, they're really pioneering the area of virtual conferences for the newspaper industry. So uh, I'm happy to be a part of that, really excited. And this, this conference is kind of a, a, a lead up, a little bit of a promotion for uh, the virtual conference that they're having in October. Okay, so let me tell you a story first. I wanna start by telling you the story for how I got interested in this, and then I'll tell you about my process in more detail. Um, Steve, welcome. Thank you very much for the comment. All right. So basically what happened was, uh, I remember the date very specifically, it was February 8th um, this year that I decided to start sharing my webcam on all sales calls. I just decided to commit to that. It was something that I had experimented with over the years and it always felt awkward. I would try it in one meeting. The other person would almost never share that webcam you know, I felt uncomfortable, so I'd stop. But I just decided that coming back from a, a series of on the road um, conferences at different state associations, I just I realized how valuable that FaceTime is. And I wanted to figure out a way to do it. And, you know, this technology has been available for decades, but I never used it. And so in February, I, I went all in every single call. I shared my webcam. I got more and more comfortable every time. Uh, no one sh was sharing their webcam during February. Though I will tell you that not a single person during those calls. But then what was really interesting was the COVID shutdown prompted this mass adoption of webcam and screen sharing technology. So, so suddenly everyone is very comfortable sharing their webcam uh, with colleagues or you know their boss, uh, you know, because they're trying to replicate the in-person work environment, right? Um, but you know, as a virtual company, we never had those tools. So, I mean, it never really even occurred to me, but 
when everyone started adopting it, uh, you know, the the sharing on their end uh, went through the roof. You know, I'd say probably 80 or 90 percent of the calls now the other person sh shares their screen. Uh, but even without that, just a general comment on this, I, I found that sharing my webcam, even without them or me seeing their camera and their reactions uh, led to a lot of success with my sales uh, conversions from, uh, you know, these leads that come into the website. And, you know, I try to uh, move them over to the Our Hometown WordPress platform. So the conversions uh, really went through the roof. We had a record breaking Q2 2020. The number of leads on the website increased and the number of customer referrals increased. Now, I don't attribute those to the new sales technique, but uh, I do, you know, the lead form submissions definitely came from COVID and, you know, a lot of papers scrambling to figure out a good solution. Uh, you know, maybe they've been procrastinating, looking for a new website. Suddenly they're all looking. So that was, I, I would say what accounts for that. We recently announced the customer referral program. I think that could have played part of the increase in referrals, but it was more likely, I think a lot of uh, the COVID impact, but the conversion rates increased uh, significantly. And I got to take the credit for this this new technique. I, I have no doubt that the prospect seeing my face, seeing my body language has has just really uh, helped that conversion process. So that's kind of how I got into this. And I started recording everything on sales calls, but then I started thinking, why not uh, you know just interview our current customers? Because you know we get the most of the majority of our leads come from referrals. So how can we market referrals? Well, you do that with testimonials, right? Written testimonials a lot of the time. And that's what we had in our, on our homepage for years, tons of great testimonials, but it's just text. And that's great, but if we can create a video testimonial, then we can also create the text by just taking the transcript. And plus you're, you're hearing directly from the customer. So invaluable from a marketing perspective, as far as I'm concerned. And so we started doing these interviews with customers. Uh, we allowed them to demonstrate a project that they had done on their WordPress site uh, to basically demonstrate our platform's features. So I don't even, honestly, these calls and these conferences uh, with publishers are way less preparation than today's. I mean, I, I had to put together this whole presentation and, and practice it, but on these interviews, the, the prep time is minimal because you just go in there with some questions, you let the conversation go wherever you know it ends up going. You want to be kind of free with it and, and not too restrictive on your agenda. Uh, I find that to be the most successful interviews. So I guess, uh, yeah, that, that's been just huge. It has changed the way that we do business and changed the way we do customer service because now we're doing this proactive outreach, you know, asking them to jump on a call, asking them to demonstrate some project that they're really proud of. And they love doing that. So all around, it builds the relationship with the customer. We get the FaceTime, which for many of these customers, we've never had that. Because again, I never shared my webcam. It just never occurred to me. So the last thing is, I love this, that we can harvest from these interviews and this, this good customer support. We can create material, this training, uh, these training videos that we use for customers to get familiar with the platform or to train even new employees at the company on how to use WordPress um, and also for our marketing. So we're repurposing everything, pushing it out on social media, every channel that we can. Now let me dig a little bit more into the process for this. This is kind of what we're all here for. Like how could you apply this uh, at your newspaper? How could this be applied to local media? And I hope to draw the the parallel here. Okay, so first of all, we, we're going to get this recording today, okay? This webinar is being recorded. We're doing this live right now, but what I'm going to get out of it is a recorded video. And I consider that to be three dimensions of media, right? Because you've got the, the two dimensions of the, the screen, and then you've got a bunch of frames back to back, so it's three dimensions of information. Okay, so that's my first piece of content, and I put that up on YouTube. Now I can export the audio for a podcast. And that's, you know, all that audio, uh, a podcast is, it's basically the audio from an interview in, in many cases, in many of the most popular podcasts. That's all that it is. So we could apply that same uh, workflow to this 
export what I would consider two dimensional media, right? Because it's it's information spread over time. So we're distilling it down into lower levels of, of media in a way, lower dimensions. And the final one would be one dimension. If you just have the transcript, then it's it's all the content of the interview, but it's not you know played out over time. So this is a third piece of content that can be created from a video interview that was done live, uh, you know, with an important member of your community. You could interview the mayor, the you know, a member of the school board, whoever it is. Uh, you know, it it doesn't really matter for your industry. Everyone's going to be different. I'm interviewing our customers. Another application I thought of for newspapers would be interviewing advertisers, just to talk about, you know, what kind of offerings they have and just put a face to the business and that kind of thing. But, you know, just kind of separating out the industry and the application, this is the process. And this is the most basic process. And this is what we pretty much follow on any video that we create. Okay, but the multi-dimensional approach, this is like the vision. This is where I see this all going. We're gonna continue doing these first three steps of creating video, creating a podcast from it, exporting the transcript um, from YouTube, by the way, that's a function of YouTube. So you just go into the video, you can export the transcript with or without uh, timestamps, and then just kind of clean it up to make it work as a, a post on your website and a post for print, an article for print, as we'll see. Okay, so we're, we're kind of, we got those first three steps covered. Sometimes we'll take a screenshot from the video and put it in the blog post on our, you know, WordPress marketing site for our hometown. Um, and so that's creating 2D media from the 3D. And then what a uh, newspaper could do at this point, once they get it on the website, reverse publish that post to print. Because you've got so you've got uh, an image, you've got the text, and you've formatted it so it looks good. It's not just a, a long transcript that would seamlessly translate back to print. And what we have on our WordPress platform is a built-in uh, export function that integrates with InDesign. It creates an XML file of all your articles, and so this would fall right into that process. But if you already have a WordPress site, then we can. Uh, install our plugin on your WordPress instance. So um, that's actually a, a plugin that you don't need to use our platform for. So if anyone's interested in that, I'd love to talk to you about it. Just shoot me an email. Um, and then here's the bonus. I love this part. Um, but this is the, the area that we're not really doing yet. I want to work on this and, and get towards this. But again, so we're starting with Zoom, creating the video, creating a blog post, uh, podcast, but now we can recycle that live stream in a, a new live streaming platform because the Zoom call, just like this go-to webinar, can be a live experience where you're getting questions in real time and you know there's more interaction during the actual interview while you're creating the original content. So that's the first live experience. But then we can create kind of a new piece of content by just taking that video that's been edited down and restreaming it on the the live social networks. So there's a pl actually a, a platform called Restream.io, and you can sign up for a free account and basically uh, simultaneously broadcast to three different live channels. And that's great because normally if you're going to live broadcast from your phone, it's got to be just Facebook or just per Periscope. So this allows you to do all platforms at once, so it's efficient, um, you know, and, and you're, you're kind of getting the audience on all those platforms at the same time. Um, so that's just kind of like the bigger point is that we're, we're recreating and repurposing this interview into all different types of media that fit different platforms, you know, some better than others. And so then we can get to our audience at, you know, on whatever platform they prefer. Some people prefer to get their news from YouTube. You know, they prefer to get it from, uh, you know, the website or, or on a podcast. They prefer to listen to information. So let's give it to them in that format. Okay. Now, I want to break down the whole process one more time, but for a real world example, this is an actual interview that I did. And I'm going to show you all the results of it. So. Uh, Tom Lapis is the publisher of the Henrico Citizen in um, 
Henrico, uh, Virginia, just outside of Richmond. And we connected for a live interview back in February. I probably spent about an hour in the pre and, and post production, uh, just preparing things, uh, you know, organizing the time, writing the questions that I wanted to touch on, that kind of thing. And then I sat down with him and t we talked for an hour on uh, a live uh, webinar just like this. So my time is about two hours that I have to put into each one of these interviews. The rest of this is spread out uh, amongst my team members, okay? And so they're helping in, in different areas. So the first step that I do after I record the live interview, what I'm gonna do right after this today, after GoToMeeting processes the video and I can download it, I send it using wetransfer.com, which is a, a platform for sending large files. I send it to my video editor who's out in California and he can just sit there and cut this video up into a lot of different content. I mean, he's created dozens of clips from an hour long interview. So that would be on the longer side. If I want him to really dig in there and, you know, get the, the highest yield of content I can from this, give me like six to 10 video highlight clips and let's make a playlist. You know, if I want him to do all that, that can be time consuming. But if we're talking about, you know, the most streamlined way, you know, it's, it's basically an hour for him to go in there and add the intro, add an outro, animation, some music, and then export the video and upload it to YouTube. Okay, so that's what we're looking at in terms of the timeline to create the video content from the live video. Um, the podcast episode, that is a 15 minute process. What you do is you take the original video, uh, the full length interview, in most cases, you might take some of the highlights instead, but I think it just makes sense to take the original and export it. You, if you open the file, the video file in QuickTime, there's an option to export audio only. So that, you know, is no more than a 15 minute process to export and then upload to Buzzsprout. This is the service that we use for broadcasting to all the podcast channels like Spotify and Apple Podcasts and everything. You just do it all in one shot with that. Okay, and uh, feel free to jump, you know, throw your questions in, in the box at any time. If I miss them, I will try to hit them, you know, at the end of this slide, but this is actually the last one of the, the talk. So for the blog post, what you're gonna do to create that, the most efficient way to do it is again, go into YouTube, uh, export that transcript and then format it. So, uh, you know, it looks like an actual interview. It's got the, the names of the interviewer and interviewee, um, you know, maybe it has some sections to it. And this is something I, I wanted to talk a little bit about in terms of the process, uh, because it might make sense. And we have done it like this earlier on when, you know, we didn't have a video editor that understood our whole business and the marketing strategy. We were just using freelance editors from uh, Upwork or WeWork remotely. Those are two uh, good services for finding freelancers but what they needed was more guidance on how to edit the video into highlights and that was very interesting because i found uh, you know it was very difficult for you know th they really had no frame of reference they had no context they're just a freelancer just cutting up the video so if we can provide them kind of with a screenplay you can create that from the blog post very easily because if you've already edited down the transcript so it looks good for uh publishing online and in print, then you know, you've already got your section headings for the different topics as you transition from you know, different questions in the interview. So if you've got those headlines in there, you just tell the editor to follow those for your cut points. And then they can listen to the hour long interview, you know, watch the transcript as it goes and just put the cut points in when they come up. So pretty much as efficient as you can make that whole process. All right. This is a, another area. Uh, well, let, let me just actually take a step back and just show you a couple of these examples. So I have all these links in here, but I didn't use any of them. So the video highlight playlist, if I click on that, we're going to see. Oh, you, maybe you can hear that. I'm not sure. Um, this is basically what it looks like. So there's our animation interview, some music fades away. This and then here we have our webinar. Uh, and share this with people. So, um, 
Okay, so just a couple things to point out here. If you don't have something to display on your screen that you're both talking about, um, then you won't share your screen and your, your cameras will take up the whole screen. So that's just something to be aware of. I mean, it's not a, necessarily a bad thing. You know, you can see the uh, people's faces a little bit better, but uh, this is how I normally conduct the interviews because you know our product is the website. So we're always kind of looking at this. And so, um, you know, I just think this is great because we're both looking at the same screen. We could be talking about different projects he's been working on. I can give him control of the screen. So, you know, uh, just thinking of ways that this could translate to newspapers. If you, you know, simply opened up your website, looked at the homepage and went down through your top stories, just kind of given a quick, a, a quick uh, overview, you know, the, the headlines. Uh, I mean, you're going to have plenty of content to keep this program um, going if, if you take that kind of approach. That's more or less the approach that we take uh, at our company with our Monday office hours. We have a blog of uh, updates and tips on how to use our platform better. And uh, I just read off the blog post points. It's, it's very easy. So there's very little preparation involved. And I think that's important to keeping this kind of thing sustainable. The podcast episode, okay, just to take a look at that really quick, this is what it looks like on Buzzsprout. And so I've got all my episodes in here. And um, let's see if we can hear this. It's the same thing as the video, okay? That's it. I heard about what you were doing. It jumped out Page right away. away. I, I don't think I've seen any other publishers doing it, which is what. Okay, so that's that's literally the, the audio from the video, uh, just as I outlined here. And then the blog post, this is something that you can, you can take further than just publishing the transcript, of course. You can add your own editorial. You can write an intro and outro. I mean, this blog post uh, went into a lot more detail and, and kind of added more um, editorial comments uh, than just the quotes from the video. But th this is just another example of ways that you can repackage all this content. You know, so we've taken the five or six highlights that you know our vid video editor created from the full length video and embedded it in the blog post and so we're kind of talking about the things that are happening in the video so again it's just about providing the information no matter how many how people want to access it whether they want to read it or they want to read to find something that they're interested in and then they want to listen and watch just that section this kind of gives them the best of all those uh, approaches Okay, then the newsletter blast, that's just less than 10 minutes of taking the time to place the blog link that I've already created on our uh, WordPress site, place it into the newsletter template because all of our WordPress sites have a, a embedded or integrated newsletter system. So uh, this will pull in the most recent posts automatically actually. So I don't even need to take the time to place it um, most of the time. But if I wanna customize the layout, or feature this blog post in its own newsletter, then you know I might take five or 10 minutes to create that template and send it out. And then here's the sixth piece of content in this case, which we don't actually do, although I did it because uh, I wanted to show that it could be done and demonstrate our reverse publishing uh, plugin on this one article. But what we're talking about here is more or less 10 or 15 minutes to export the article from the website to InDesign for PDF layout. So then it, it comes, it kind of hits all areas of uh, your newspaper platform, all the digital, and it makes it way all the way back to print. Okay, so starts with Zoom, you get it on YouTube, export the text for WordPress, export the audio for podcast, and then export the XML for InDesign. Okay. See, I'm actually not really looking at that full screen, am I? Okay, there we go. I think we're back. <laughs> Let me catch up. Okay, so any quit All right, so we got a couple comments here. Good, thank you, Allison. Uh, use Canva. Let's see to create graphics for newsletter. Canva. Okay, I think I've heard of that. Is that that might be um, kind of is that related to Upsplash uh, at all? Like open source kind of content. I'll look into that, Canva, C-A-N-V-A, for everyone listening, to create 
graphics for the newsletter. So that's just that would be a quick way to to put together a, a media rich newsletter, right? Because we've got maybe uh, an image from the the video, maybe a screenshot from the video, but maybe we want a more customized graphic in the newsletter. Okay, so Steve is saying Canva is excellent. He's uh, a, a graphic designer, and so similar to Photoshop. Okay, but much more simple. And it sounds like it's, is it a web-based platform? Yeah, curious about this, or is it something you download? And it's probably web-based. It's in the cloud, anyone can log on. Cool, all right, yeah, that's amazing. Um, it's a graphic design open source program. Okay, good feedback. Yeah, so if you don't wanna you know, pay for Amazon or uh, Adobe Cloud, this is a great alternative. I'll definitely check that out. I do not have Photoshop myself. Okay, getting more questions. Good, good. Canva, canva.com, thank you. I think I did canva.com. Okay, very cool. I appreciate all this feedback. And then we've also got Inkspace. Okay, so that's another good open source tool, I believe. Um, I think that might be from Google. Uh, just all the same features as Photoshop, right? It's it's a free graphic program, Ink Space, Ink Space, very cool. Okay, good feedback. All right. Um, so yeah, that's basically the process that we followed for this article. Now, um, okay, we hit good timing here. I, I really uh, I forgot to mention at the beginning, but I need to keep this to thirty minutes. Uh, today for the presentation, although I can stay on if people have more questions, but I did want to start to wrap it up here today and um, just point out, a, a f make a few announcements. And if you have questions on my presentation while I'm doing all these announcements, please drop them in because I'll circle back at the end. I want to make sure I've got uh, all the questions answered about the video processing. But what I really want to plug are a couple of events we've got coming up. Uh, every two weeks uh, for the next two months, uh, we're going to be doing a virtual conference like this. So the next one is going to be on rethinking paywalls, uh, specifically geared towards free newspapers, or sorry, print newspapers is the first one. Uh, that's going to be August 21st at this time, 1 p.m. Eastern. And with that, we're going to be talking about strategies for, you know, how to set up your uh, digital subscription model, how to promote it, how to offer coupons, and grow your subscriber base. That's going to be the focus of that one. Rethinking paywalls again, because everyone is rethinking paywalls in the time of uh, you know post COVID, post shutdown. Uh, you know all the rules I think have been thrown out the window, and, and free print newspapers that have never considered having a paywall. More and more of them are coming to the us asking questions about it. They're uh, open to a digital uh, model, a revenue, a reader revenue based model rather than digital advertising. And, you know, I think it's a very logical uh, place to, for these publishers to be looking because, you know, digital advertising has never material materialized uh, in the way that it was uh, hoped to, you know, uh, just get the traffic and, and you'll get the ads. Um, you know, it's kind of been the whole market's been taken over by Google and Facebook. So free newspapers need to adapt and they need to consider some type of a paywall for their website. We can talk about all the different ways we can approach that with registration walls and, you know, different strategies for marketing uh, the digital product. Okay. Our third virtual conference is going to be for uh, reverse publishing from website to InDesign. So that's, we had a brief uh, touch on that today as part of the whole video process, but this is going to be focusing on how it's done for the written content for the print edition. Uh, that'll be Friday, uh, September 18th at this time. And then this is all going to be leading up to the NNA virtual conference, which is Thursday through Saturday, October 1st through the 3rd. Uh, so I hope you all uh, go over to nna.org, check that out, and consider joining us as an attendee. I'll be giving five uh, presentations. Three of them are here. One of them was today, and then a fifth on uh, donation strategies for newspapers. Okay, so um, just to wrap this up here, uh, I want to just give you a little bit more background on our hometown. 
We were originally founded in upstate New York, a little town called Clifton Springs in the Finger Lakes back in 1997. So we've been in business for over 23 years, helping newspapers. We're currently 100% remote across the U.S. I'm actually located out in Utah. Uh, you know, we have people in Montana, up still a lot in upstate New York, but we have been totally unaffected by the shutdown. Our business uh, operations have not changed at all. And so, um, very solid there. What we're looking at in terms of uh, our uh, influence, I guess, or the size, we manage about 200 weekly newspapers and daily newspapers across North America. We're now getting into Canada. And uh, our traffic is uh, roughly around 8 million in an average uh, month, 8 million page views. Uh, but that has spiked to uh, around 12 million during COVID uh, each month. And so the system really proved itself during that period. It was able to scale and meet that demand without any performance issues. So we were really proud of that. And if anyone's interested in you know, learning more about how we can help you with your newspaper website, or even talking more about uh, the topic today, uh, the whole video processing, um, I'm, I'm available. Just uh, reach out to us. You can email me, uh, emails mcl at our-hometown.com. Uh, but if you wanted to schedule a demo and talk about moving over to our WordPress platform, I'd love to set that up. We can provide a free website audit. We'll look at your current website, uh, the different things that you're doing there, how they could be improved, how we could generate more revenue, either through digital subscriptions or you know, a better advertising package. So uh, I hope to hear more from you. I hope you all join us for our following uh, upcoming virtual conferences. And uh, I wanted to check... Oh, okay. Sounds good, Danielle. We'll, we'll definitely connect soon. Thank you so much. Um, okay. So then, unless there's any other questions, I'll leave this uh, webinar rolling. If you want to drop any questions in the questions area, I can answer them through text. Uh, we can go back and forth that way. Or if you want to drop your email in the questions area, I could follow up. Um, or again, just shoot me an email. And uh, thank you all so much for the time today. This has been a really fun presentation for me. This has been a little bit different to talk about a technique that we developed at the company. So I've really enjoyed uh, sharing this with you. I hope you found it useful and uh, I hope you'll join us for future conferences. Thank you all so much. Have a great day.